Type R, the only model in Honda's production car lineup that directly inherits Honda's racing genes, the roots of which come from Formula One racing cars. The Integra Type R debuted in 1995, following the release of the first Type R, the NSXR. Although it had a front-wheel drive layout, which isn't common for a sports car, the vehicle was regarded as the world's fastest in its class. Reigning at the top is the fastest car in its class for six years, the Integra R has been reborn. And now Gonson takes the new Integra Type R onto the track. This second generation Integra Type R made its grand debut in early July as a Japanese domestic model. The major changes made to the new Integra Type R were with the engine and chassis. The capacity of the natural aspirated engine was increased to 2 liters. The platform of the current Civic is used on the new Integra Type R to clear various environmental and safety regulations. Although it's gained a little weight compared to the earlier model, the Type R spirit lives on in the new Integra with a newly equipped 6-speed transmission, 17-inch tires, and Brembo brakes for top performance. Just by looking at these specs, the new Integra R seems to have the potential to reign for another generation. Um, it was in 1995 when the Integra Type R made its uh, dramatic debut. Of course, performance-wise, there were other cars like the NSX or some uh, 280 horsepower rivals. But uh, the affordable price tag of this car was a main factor of this car's success amongst uh, younger auto fans. The car was very much loved by these people and can easily be spotted on any track event in Japan. Despite having only 1.8 liters, it lapped its Kuba circuit in the 1 minute 8 second range. To me, the Integra R is a model that represents the whole Honda R series. And this time after 6 years, the model has been redesigned inside and out. Um, the engine is now 2 liters, and the body looks larger than the old model because of the increase in height. But it actually hasn't changed that much. While the good bits from the old model are kept with the new model, new improvements, and uh, such as uh, brake performance and uh, driving performances were made. I was told that the new model has the potential to run one second faster at Scuba. I'm very excited to test this car. Now for Gonsan's first impression of the car on the test course. He'll be checking the car's overall quality, basic settings, and high speed stability. Let's see how the car reacts at full throttle without slalom. Not bad, if you consider that the wind is quite strong today. Very stable. Let's now see how it banks. I can feel the improvement in ride quality. Mm, the front feels a little heavy. Might have been better to strengthen the roll rigidity. The road surface is quite rough here, but this car is handling very well. Mm, 
it's uh, difficult to say. I mean, if you're going on the track, you can use a little more firmness with the suspension. But more users are going to use this car on a daily basis. On the street, the setting of this car might be just right. The car could use a little more power during acceleration, but this is still the outer course, so let's see how we do on the winding road. Let us first get some impression of the successful old model. Although, I know you weren't directly involved with the development of the old Integra. What do you think about it, Mr. Otobe? Yes, the previous Integra R started out from an Integra base model, sharing the same platform, for example the chassis. The concept was to improve the overall performance by modifying it from the base whereas the new generation Integra Type R was designed and developed to be the Type R from scratch. Mm. I felt that the body rigidity has improved. The engine is easy to use as a torque kicks in from lower revs, and the cross six-speed transmission makes overall shifting very, very enjoyable. I must confess that at the beginning we didn't exactly have the objective to build a vehicle that pursued noise vibration efficiency or ride quality at all. But as I said previously, we were able to develop the new car from scratch, which enabled us to design a rigid body for Type R's top performance requirements. This basic design ended up giving the car a refined quality ride, something we didn't plan on in the beginning. Designing a rigid body gives the car high quality handling and noise vibration efficiency, while giving the engine linear torque characteristics, making the engine easier to use. Also, building a transmission that is easy to shift by strengthening the synchro, you'll get a lighter shift feel that is friendly to the driver. As a conclusion, pursuing high performance resulted in total refinement of the vehicle. And frankly, even I was amazed at how this all worked out in this final product, the new Integra Type R. Which part of the car did you focus on the development the most? Obviously the engine, but uh, where else did you focus on? Our goal was to improve the car's overall performance. We also focused on cutting a second off the old car's lap time at Scuba Circuit. We considered several things, like the engine output characteristics, along with the horsepower requirements, and how the engine should respond for optimum acceleration. We also looked into the relationship between the tire's cornering limit and its cornering speed as we developed the tires. That is how we finalized the new car's specs, but I must say, it was pretty hard to realize all of our goals. It was also a challenge for us to develop the new car with new technologies that we hadn't adopted before, such as the Brembo brakes and the lightened flywheel made from chrome molybdenum. Uh, that must mean that the development cost must have been quite high. Yes. And uh, speaking on behalf of all the fans out there, I sure hope the price tag on this new Integra Type R is set at around the same price range as the old car. Yes, we tried our best. Well, I'm gonna go take the new Integra R on some winding roads to test to see if its performance has really improved up to the standards of Otobe-san of Honda claims. You know, even if the car has advanced technology, 
If the car isn't faster, it has no value. I'm gonna be a little harsh. Is he ever? Gansan testing the Integra R on the winding course at its home ground, the Takasu Test Course. This is way faster than the old model. I'm gonna go for it. My first impression of the car was that it was a little bit more mild than I expected. But that was all blown away when I got the car onto a winding road. This car is very fast. I hear people saying that the new Integra R had become a tamer vehicle losing the racing ambiance. But if you look at the increased traction and the changes made to the camber angle for more speed and stability, we can call this change a positive adaptation to make the car quicker. At this uh, Takasu test course, the third, fourth, and fifth gears are the main gears to run on as it has a lot of high speed corners. But even if we run in scuba, which forces you to use second, third, and fourth gears, this car would run perfectly fine thanks to the close gearing. Um, I've compared the new Brembo brakes with the old model and uh, found that the Brembos have more than sufficient controllability, even at full braking mode. Of course, the brakes on the earlier model never faded, so it did the job. But the increased body rigidity and the bigger dim tires on this new model must have contributed to this improvement. The control's great for corners that need braking, in the corner entrances and exiting corners. The increased body weight can't be felt from the driver's seat at all. The car is finished perfectly. The rear stability and traction on high-speed corners especially are both incredible. From such driving feel, you can see how this car has evolved in the past five to six years. Other than that, you can actually sense improved engine response from the lighter flywheel made from special alloys, and shifting has been improved tremendously, making the car more responsive to the driver. The new generation front wheel drive requires special driving skills, which is rather different from the techniques required to control rear wheel drive rides. But there's a reward in mastering this machine. Whenever I was able to go through a corner with the right line and speed, I got the satisfaction, a pleasure that only the Integra can offer. I think people who buy this car would be able to experience what I'm talking about. But I would recommend everyone, even the non-owners, to drive this car once and simply enjoy it what this car has to offer. How do the JDM sports cars compare to the benchmarks of the M3 and Carrera? Here's the contest to see which car can offer driving pleasure to go along with speed. Third generation E46 M3 comes with an aggressive exterior that emphasizes high performance. While other manufacturers are shifting to V-type engines, this newly developed inline six-cylinder power plant produces 343 ponies. 
This unit is combined with an electronically controlled throttle, which can be adjusted by a push of a button to provide comfort for daily driving, and a sport driving mode that offers the driver the sensitive throttle response needed on the racetrack. High revving yet flexible engine redlines at 8,000 RPMs while providing 80% of maximum torque at a low 2,000 revs per minute. The newly designed sports seats have adjustable side supports which can be adjusted from a normal relaxing position to a bucket seat-like position for sports driving. The backrest and side supports are inflatable. The ideas and technology to bring sport driving and comfort in a single package are simply amazing. Michelin Pilot Sports Tires were chosen for the contest. Now, let's see how fast this car is in its first battle. The highlight of this fight is the duel between the new M3 and the facelifted monster sedan, the M5. Will the 5 liter 400 HP engine be enough to beat the M3? Both cars are equipped with 6 speed manual transmission. How fast is the basic Beamer? Manual transmissions can now be had on the 330i M Sport. The domestic GT Sports King, the Aristo, will challenge the M5 with a turbocharged engine and a four-speed automatic transmission. Up against the M3 is the all-wheel drive Legacy B4 RSK with 280 horsepower and a five-speed tranny. And rivaling the BMW 330i is the Accord Euro R. With the BMWs and the JDMs lined up against each other on the grid, here's the driver for the new M3. This is the debut contest for the new M3. This car is very fast. But I'm a bit disappointed about the wet surface conditions we have today. It might be quicker to have the DSC switched on. I'll try it with and without during the bout and uh, hope to bring out the car's real potential. All right, let's start the three lap battle. The winner moves on to the next clash. Oops, I should have turned off the traction control. The M5 starts with the DSC on, not able to make use of the 400 horses. Man, I lost speed at the start. Everyone's fast. I'm going to do two laps with the DSC on. Sure about that, Nakaya-san? Might be taking it a little too easy. This car is heavy. It's probably in the neighborhood of 1,800 keys, but it maneuvers rather well. Hey! Wow, look at Aristo. What the heck's he doing? Even with the rain, Nakaya-san's M3 lengthens the lead. And wow, look at Gan-san attack Hattori's 330. Gosh darn it, I'm losing speed. Give me some room so I can find my line. Get out of my way. Sorry, Gramps. Take your time, geezer. Oh, the M5 is here. What took you so long? Well, he did mess up at the start. Not that much difference in the corner. Dang, this car is heavy. I'm getting some understeering here. The Legacy's jumped to second place, but... Ooh. 
This car turns much faster, but on the straights? I had the DSC on the first lap. I'm going to ditch it now. Man, let's see the difference. The rear slides a bit, and here I'm getting too much power. Will Takio's high-powered four-wheel drive legacy break loose? The M3 is fast even with the DSC on. If I have the right line, which is a line that doesn't let the DSC work, I can keep up the space. It's heavy. This front end is cumbersome. I can't get it to turn into the corners. Gansan in there with an automatic doing quite well with it. Whoa, what happened there? The VSC works where it shouldn't. The Euro R did well in the infield, but on the straight. The Legacy humming along fast. Mm, the M3 is fast too. The M3 is fast. But is that some understeering on the final corner? Let's turn off the DSC. This is how the car looks in action. And now the final lap. Is the M3 too fast for me? I do have four wheel drive in this ring, you know. Although the traction control is off, the Aristo's VSC can't be cut off. It does this when you slide the car. Considering that this car is a hefty 1,800 kilos, it's performing great. He's closing in on the Euro R. Corner exit Drift King style by the Drift King himself. That was great, but this thing's fat, heavy. On the infield, those lighter cars are simply faster. Look how the M3 is performing with the DSC switched off. How can a car like this perform so well? Ew, the M5 is drifting back there. There we go, I got away. The engine response is so sensitive. I can't lose concentration, and corners like this one are tough in these conditions. The M3 comes in first, no sweat. The conditions less than ideal for this ride, but the M3 left the legacy in the rear view mirror. So who came in first? The M3. This car is fast. M3? Who was the M3 fighting? No one. Oh. The M3 has no rivals. The M5 was quick, wasn't it? When the DSC is switched off, the M5's rear wheel has become totally free. It's cumbersome, but fun. You know, the Aristo's active control settings should be reset or uh, provide us with a cutoff switch. Yeah, it's getting better, but they really should do that. Other than that, the Aristo's a nice ride. And who was second? The Legacy. Legacy? Yeah, the Legacy. The Legacy flies, doesn't it? It's fast, but... Especially in these conditions. Four-wheel drives are good. How does it compare with the other vehicles? The car was fast on the straights, but not as fast as the M3. The four-wheel drive was a big advantage in the wet conditions. Did you OR get beat up? No, it's quite fast in the corners. But on the straight, it couldn't keep up with the B4. What was good about the corners? It's got a two-liter non-turbo, right? The braking was good, and the cornering was pretty fast. How about Hachang? I was in the 330i. Yeah, it was a nice machine. A standard Beamer, right? Rivals? I had no one in front of me, and no one was behind me. The, what you call it, the, um, you know, the, the DSC? I had, I had that most of the time, but when I switched it off, the tires didn't grip. Yeah, mm -hmm, right. It doesn't grip. Exactly, it, it doesn't go with tarmac. 
So that's why you were fooling around after the race. At the hairpin, you were spinning. Uh, just a tad. I thought I'd warm up my tires, but the race was already over, so what the hey? Hattori gets away with a lot. Congrats on winning two in a row. Arigato. Next up, the drift test by Mr. Drift King himself, Tsuchiya. This is the fun part of driving, and one way to enjoy a sports car. Ah, oh, nice power slide there. The car's movement is very light. Because it's light, it turns in very easily. Oh, here's a little understeering. Um, it's more than adequate when you go over the limit. But you know, it's different from being easy to drift. The CBC activates when braking into a corner. After you're in the drifting mode, the car responds to the driver right away. It responds back to counter steer. Very much different from some of the unfriendly cars out there that don't react well with the driver. With the RX-7 having the same layout as the M3, we know the RX-7's fast, but is it any fun? The feel of the suspension is similar to that of ones found on typical sports cars. Is it fun? I'm afraid not. The M3 is a much more enjoyable ride. Designing the car to go faster and making a car fun to drive are two different things. It's hard to draw the line. Whoa! On the rain, this understeering is horrible. It's the benchmark for all sports vehicles, the Porsche 911 Carrera. This car has torque. After it slides, whoa, I'm water skiing. Once it starts sliding, it's a little bit tricky, as usual. Compared to the uh, BMW, I mean the M3, and the RX-7, the steering action of the Porsche has to be a bit quicker. Yeah, it's, it's easy to get into drift mode. Easier than the M3 or the RX-7. I can feel the weight shifting towards the back much more clearly. One more from the JDM lineup, the mid-engine NSX Type S. How does it compare to the rear-engine Porsche? It's easy like the Porsche. Simple to change the car's direction. The car just goes in the corner if I give it a little brake action. The Carrera and the NSX are both predictable. Even though they're both extremely fast cars, they have room for driving pleasure as well. There is sufficient capacity for turning the car's direction with the gas pedal. This is what I'm talking about. After only about three laps, the tires used to become stable, so I can't precisely judge a car's abilities only by doing a single lap. Basically, all the cars were equipped with ABS, which caused the car to understeer at the entrance of each corner. So it wasn't exactly a drift test. But the Carrera and the NSX had enough to convince me from the single lap 
that the car didn't need any warm-up for me to control it. And next, we have additional entries of the fastest domestic four-wheel drives, all equipped with full options. A scuba circuit fight over five laps in a race between sports cars from Germany and Japan. As usual, grid positions in accordance with the lap times of the timed qualifier, slower cars in front, Gansan in the Porsche. The Porsche Turbo was fast in previous races, but this is a Carrera, and the uh, understeering in this car gets worse in rainy conditions like today. I don't think this car is going to turn at corners. Today's conditions give four-wheel drives a great advantage. The Impreza STI is on the second grid. I was expecting to drive on the dry surface, but today's conditions are tough. I tried to take advantage of a four-wheel drive at the start. Who's going to win the FR battle? The total balance of this car is quite good. It's rather unfortunate that it's raining, but I'll do my best. The race will be a test of the M3's evolution. We're going against the fastest Japanese models, but considering the circuit conditions, I don't think I could take on the four-wheel drives. I'll try to catch the NSX, and of course, my main rival is the Porsche. I'd like to see the difference in performance with the Carrera. And on grid number five is... I took the top position for two-wheel drives, but the four-wheel drives are fast. I'm going to push this thing to the limit. The Evo 7 RS managed to debut win at Scuba in the rain. How will the GSR do? This Evo 7 is fast in dry conditions and it should also be fast in the wet. Since this is a four-wheel drive along with the GTR, there's a one-row handicap on the grid for these two cars. I'm thinking of letting the GTR eat my dust. The GTR is a fully loaded V-Spec 2. Might it possibly have a slight advantage against the others? This is a V-Spec 2. This car is not a demo car from Nissan, but is actually owned by Best Motoring, so there are no tricks under the hood. It's truly a car anyone can buy from the dealer. Since there's some blow-by, this car is additionally equipped with an oil scavenging tank. Is this the first time this car is running in a contest? It's a new car, so I hope I don't wreck it. I'm looking forward to seeing how well a car that anyone can buy does against the competition. Which is going to win, a German or Japanese car? And they are off. Takia's Evo 7 taking the outside and improving its position. And let's take a look again at the rocket start by Takia. Whoa, a little, a little jump there. Is that cheating? That was a pretty good start. I have absolutely nowhere to go. Wow! Mr. Nakaya, aren't you getting a little too far inside? Four-wheel drives are great. Is the Evo 7 coming? Hey, the Kurosawa is a family feud Bruin. Whoa, I'm getting too close with this and the steer. And the NSX muscling into fourth place. And the Hattori driven GTR passing the sixth place RX7. The squeeze is on right from the start. Wet surface, no problem for the Evo 7 with ACD. And here goes Taku cutting to the inside of Big Papa with good braking. How will I do against the Porsche? Not bad at this straight, eh? Hey? hey, is that Evo 7 really that fast? These two battling for fifth. The GTR is fast on the straights. Passing the Impreza. And although conditions do not favor the rear wheel drives, Nakaya's M3 managing to hold on to third. 
I'm not too bad at the corners either, huh? And now for the second lap. Can the M3 catch the Porsche? And keep your eye on the GTR. It got off to a slow start, but now it's coming on strong. I don't think taking on Gansan's Porsche is going to be easy with only this much difference in speed. I feel sorry for the GTR with nowhere to go. But hey, I don't have anywhere to go either, so bear with me a little while longer. Hey, I'm much faster. Gansan in the Porsche in front, the others lined up, bunched up behind him. Hey, that M3 is pretty quick. Bumper to bumper on the straightaway. Wow, this GTR is flying. Tsuchiya san, he's a coming. The GTR is smoking. I want to say, hey, don't be rude. You're a full wheel drive. This speed is unreal. Folks, this is the driving of a Formula Japan champion, and the new GTR is also running strong and taking the inside on the M3. Turn in tight and exit outside. Ah, this understeering sucks. Now, Tsuchiya's NSX is right behind the M3. Nakaya determined with the DSC system turned off. I can't turn here. Two wheel drive cars can't step on the gas at this corner. Hey, the Porsche and the GTR are close now. Watch it, look out. Looks like the Porsche is buying some time blocking the way for my getaway. Hmm, doesn't look like the Porsche is blocking. Doesn't seem like Gansan's doing that. He's just doing his thing. Oh, I'm slipping. Now here's Hattori, desperate to overtake. Dang, that was close. Will the GTR take him? Can Gansan manage this one? Hey, watch it, for real. Check yourself. Hey, that's too close. Y you son of a... Hey! This skeezer geezer is coming too close from the inside. Gansan nerves of steel. I'm serious. Whoa, we're gonna hit. Not gonna let these rookies push him around. Finally, I'm getting some control with this wild bike. Okay, I'm definitely taking him on the straight, crossing over from the outside. Four-wheel drives have a decided advantage at corner exits, or at least they're supposed to. Dang it, I misshifted. Well, the RX-7 looks like its rear end is all over the place. Do I have a chance? No, sir, not on this day, Jose. Oh, man. And the GTR wanting to chase the Evo 7, still having difficulties overtaking the Porsche. Towards the back, the fourth place battle heating up between the 3.2 liter normally aspirated machines. And there goes Tsuchiya's NSX right to the inside of the M3. Yo, get away from me, punk. And the Impreza also closing in. I'm getting some understeering. 
Adios, amigo. Wow, look at the NSX. Pull ahead with its speed. And what about the outside? Wow, from the side Clyde and look at him attacking. Looks like the second and fourth place skirmishing will not end till the checkered flag. I misshifted, you rookie. Here goes Yamaji with the four wheel drive. A breaking duel. Second place battle climaxing at the back straight acceleration point. Will the GTR get in front? Yes, there he goes. And the Impreza taking over fifth because of its braking. I was taken at the last possible moment. The checkered flag goes to the Evo 7, followed by the GTR, giving the domestic four-wheel drives a 1-2 finish. Porsche manages first among the two-wheel drives, while the M3, running its second battle in a row, finishes sixth. Looking from the Porsche, four-wheel drives are fast. The rear-wheel drive train can generate traction, but there are moments when I couldn't step on the gas. Us two-wheelers couldn't push it. Yeah, that's right. The Evo 7 is no fun driving on dry pavement. It's just a fast car. There's a bit of oversteering, and at the exits, the car's handling neutralizes. Mine was a four-wheel drive, but it wasn't that fast. Not all four-wheel drives are fast. Yeah, I think it's all overall balance. Does that mean the GTR and Porsche wasn't a good duel? No, not really. You mean the Porsche is not a good match for the GTR? No, frankly, the GTR is much faster at corners, and it has a lot of traction at the exits as well. Then what's good about the Porsche? The straight acceleration after initially coming out of the corner. Hey, Juichi, I didn't even notice you being out there. I gave it my best at the start. I took it easy on the first lap, but from the second and third laps, my tail started to go. <laughs> it was started to go where? Raining, dude. I mean, I lost my rear end traction because of the rain. Maybe the tire pressure changed on you. I thought I'd battle well with the Porsche, since speeds on the straightaway seemed equal. But I did feel that the Porsche had better traction after the corners. So the rear wheel drivetrain was an advantage. I was able to hold back on my brakes going into the corner. I thought the M3 would leave me soaked in its way, but the NSX was in fact faster. In a way, Japanese cars get going too fast too easily, spoiling the fun of driving. For example, the Evo 7 and the GTR are both four-wheel drives, but the driving feel on these two cars are totally different. Lap times may be similar, but the driving qualities are totally different. Yeah, Japanese cars are already at top levels in terms of speed, and they should leave it that way, but I want more engineering and development done in terms of stability at high speeds, driving comfort, and driving quality. Yeah, but that's easier said than done. They can do it, but not without putting some weight on. The previous coup d'etat attempt by the Rally Zoku, which occurred at Izu Shuzenji, was ended by the Street Zoku, and peace returned to the streets. But a new force has risen, creating turmoil in the region. It's a group armed with power on all four wheels, a group known as the Evo Empire. Originally, this four-wheel drive gang never wandered on paved roads, but from the late 90s, the Evo Empire began their invasion and became rulers of the racing world in no time. However, there remains one sacred ground which the Empire has yet to conquer, a place where handling as well as speed is required for a car to rule, the toge. And now the four-wheel drive Evo Empire has brought their ultimate machines to invade the toge. To defend against this invasion, the Street Zoku and the Rally Zoku have formed an alliance. The Devil of Toge, the Evo Empire Strikes Back. 
Here we are at the Devil's Toget's Chia-san. Boy, do we have a race prepared for you this time. Yeah, yeah, but you always cheat. No, no, this time it's amazing. Rumor has it that four-wheel drives are everywhere. Yeah, they're up to their ears in mud. Yeah, the four-wheel drives are at the toge, especially ones with tight corners. I hear that the Lancers and Emprezas are really fast. And you know, I also hear that a monster lives in the toge. Yeah, right. I'm serious, you should watch yourself. All right, I'd like to see this monster. <laughs> <laughs> really? Watch out, here. Here she comes. Boy, this one's a cutie. Here she comes. Hi, it's Chia san this cute little thing is Miss Rima Aoyagi, and ain't she sexy? I was told by the toge monster himself to capture Tsuchiya-san's heart. <laughs> Take my sexy beam! <laughs> okay, let's get started with the battle between the two-wheel and four-wheel drives. The battle will take place on a closed toge with very tight corners in the middle section. Total length of the course, about 1.5 kilometers. Battle rules, a run and chase method going up and downhill, just like the initial D. A tail to nose battle without any guardrails. The top contender for the Evo Empire is the stock Impreza WRX STI. Although this is a car that can be bought from a dealer in Japan, it's already armed with various tuning parts. From the two-wheel drive team, Dory Dory has brought his own Hachiroku for the dogfight. Here we are, to start the Devil's Toge battle. Ow. Yeah! What the heck? A four-wheel drive stock impressive. Don't you have any pride, man, bringing a car like that against a Hachi Well, I just wanted to ensure my victory. Hey, don't bet your luck on a stock 280 horsepower job. I know it took you a long time to set up this Hachiroku over the years, but I couldn't resist kicking its butt using this normal stock ride. <laughs> hey, you're starting to tick me off. Think of it this way, a stock Impreza is more than enough to race against a Hachiroku. And here we go! Morito's going easy with the gas from the start. The high-power Impreza is locked onto the Hachiroku's rear. The corners get tighter from here. Looks like Shia-san is pretty determined. You betcha! Dori Dori's serious against that four-wheel drive. He's waiting for the right moment in the tight corner section. Got you now! Into a long bending corner and Orito struggling with understeering. In the tight corner section, Orito's thrown off rhythm by Dory Dory's fast pace and pays for it with understeering. Oh no, I'm losing him! You might come back on the straight. I've really lost him. And the Hachiroku takes the uphill duel. The downhill is going to be tough on this long straight. I'll take it easy up to the start. Wow, that thing's boogieing. Rito's turtle start works as he leaves the Hachiroka behind. Dang, he's fast! But then the Impreza has a difficult time carrying speed into this long curve. And Orito's lost the advantage he had at the start. Okay, now we're booking. Downhill hairpin, Orito takes it tight using the parking brake. From here, it'll be a contest of acceleration. Tsuchiya's Hachiroku locks on and beats the Impreza. Oh, darn it! And the Hachiroku takes the downhill too. You see, an expensive car is not necessarily fast on the togays. 
Yeah, yeah. I guess normal stock rides aren't cut out for this. I mean, the corners were really tough for me. I couldn't step on the gas at all. Maybe the stock tires aren't so good. Well, that's okay. two victories. That's two for you. The Monster Mash! Ooh. To recover from this unexpected loss, the Evo Empire brings in a tuned machine, the Boss Lancer Evo 7. Although still under development, this machine easily wears the 255 width tires and is equipped with high-tech ACD and AYC systems. Taking on the second challenger, the two-wheel drive team brings in the Amuse S2000. It's armed with the usual high-tech body parts, slimming off more than 100 keys without taking out the air conditioner. Although there might be a difference of more than 100 horses with the enemy, it'll go for the win with high-speed cornering as its main weapon. This battle is a bit difficult to predict. This is going to be interesting, and you know, anything could happen on the toge. Yeah, let's see. Frankly, I'm a bit worried about this one, but it's all about winning. Here we go, battle number two. Now use the turtle start again. The corners are going to be the key. And once again, Orito uses the turtle start and leaves the S2000 behind. The Lancer is looking good with quick entry speed into the corner. Tsuchiya might be behind the eight ball on this one. All righty. Woo! Uh oh, my revolutions have dropped. Tsuchiya knows full well he's got to catch up in this section and he's pushing it. Watch out! I'm on you, Junior! Boy, turbos are fast going uphill. Uh-oh, he's whooping me on this straight. No sweat. None indeed, Ordito's Lancer takes the uphill. I have to start well within my torque range. Orito lining up to cut off Dori Dori's best cornering line. I think he's ticked off Dori Dori there. I'll get away in the infield. It's become a serious mano a mano contest. Tsuchiya's S2000 leading into the hairpin. Can the high tech four wheel drive catch him? That S2000 is looking fine. And it rules the downhill. That was easy. Hey, I won the uphill. Come on, all you can do is go fast on the straights. Straights are part of the toge too. I'll give you a gift horse. It was easy going after the Lancer in the infield. It just shows that a perfectly tuned rear wheel drive machine is quick anywhere. This Lancer is still under development, you see. Once the settings are perfect, it'll be unstoppable. Nah, I think four-wheel drives should stick to playing in the mud. No, no, that's not true. Four-wheel drives can do toges. Looking from behind the infield, what in the heck were you doing? All you did was go like a rocket on the straights. What's the enjoyment of coming to the toges if you only drive like an idiot? Yeah, it's fun in a way. The S2000 was going sideways and everywhere, and you look really cool. The Evo Empire has no choice now but to bring on its ultimate weapon. machine that is actually running in the All Japan Gymkhana Tournament, an Impreza from Advan Garage Kameda, a specially made monster with a body that's been widened by 100 millimeters. Everything except for the main monocoque has been modified to shed weight.
Dory Dory takes it for a spin. The steering is weird. The steering position is a bit too high for Dory Dory. I can't see a darn thing with this glare. Sorry folks, we weren't able to record any comments this time, but it's apparent the car looks good and seems really fast. The two-wheel drive forces now bring in the S15 Silvia, an all-Japan rally machine from Brig Omega CSP. The owner of CSP, Matsumoto-san, has tons of experience on the WRC circuit and modified this S15 based on his know-how. Yo, what's that grin on your face? Come on, listen to the tunes of this exhaust and take a look at these flared fenders. Has anyone ever told you like common sense bring a monster like that here? Hey, anything can happen on the toge. A race car against a race car. Morito starts ahead and the battle is on. Morito-kun, it takes more than muscle and power to rule these winding roads. I'll show that overall balance is the key to winning. Acceleration appears even Steven. Morito's Impreza looks like it needs some getting used to. How's he gonna jet through the low speed corners? Morito's Impreza is on the get go. drives are fast at the corner exits. This one's mine. The impressive Impreza wins it. I'll give him the straights, but the corners are all mine. Because of the close gear ratio, the Impreza loses some ground at Tsuchiya's S15. Tsuchiya, again determined and intense. No words coming from him now. But Orito's Impreza is closing in on the downhill corner. Here's this hairpin will determine the outcome of the duel. Dang it, he's got my butt. And the Impreza locks on. No doubt, Impreza victorious. Okay, you were fast. Yeah, when you build a racing car with four-wheel drive, yeah. it's going to be fast. The handling's a bit tricky with this car. But the cornering speeds were very stable with good traction, so I was often able to put the pedal to the metal. You were romping on it while I was skating everywhere. All I had to do was just step on it. Really, four-wheel drives are fast. Yeah, but all you do is step on it and steer in the direction you want to go. I still believe in two-wheel drives. There's more to enjoy in driving than just going fast. Actually, I agree with you. There's nothing like that feeling you get coming out of that corner on a rear-wheel drive machine. No excitement knowing that you took the best line. That's true. Rear-wheel drive machines look good sliding out from exiting a corner. Even if it might be slower. Anyway, it was a 3-3 tie. The Evo Empire was thinking sweep against the two-wheel drives, but the rear-wheel drives were tough to beat with their high cornering speeds. Four-wheelers did prove their quickness, but there's more to driving than just going fast around the track, a fact proven by Dory Dory himself. But the fat lady hasn't yet begun to sing. This battle is not over.
Thank you.